Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today for another video to go on my series on natural remedies for whatever condition it is you're trying to help with. And remedies isn't always the best thing to call it. It's basically I'm trying to gear you towards things that will help balance whatever it is, not necessarily cure it. In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. But before I continue, I must start off with this disclaimer that I don't always think to say right at the top of the video because I get so excited about sharing this information, but that is I am not a doctor. I am not licensed in any form of healthcare, be it natural or allopathic. It doesn't matter. I'm not licensed in any of this. I spent a good part of my lifetime starting in my mid-teens until now at the age of 55 and I'm still learning all the time about natural health and ways to prevent going on medications or to get off of medications as well as just a healthy overall lifestyle. So I've never claimed to be anything more than that. And though some people will hear whatever it is they want to hear and make false accusations, I've always tried to be upfront and honest. So my purpose of these is to share with you what I have learned and not to give medical advice, but to help you do your own research based off some of the stuff I'm able to share here, then you can look into it for your own self and talk to your doctor, whether they be a naturopath or an allopathic doctor, you can take this information to them and ask them about that. So I'm not trying to discredit doctors at all. I'm trying to get you to do your own research because a lot of times, especially when we're talking allopathic medicine, a lot of doctors will just go right to medication without actually finding the root of the problem, which is important, or even offering any suggestions of other things that you can do besides going on pharmaceutical medicines, which often cause more problems than what they help with and oftentimes can even aggravate the very thing that they're supposed to help cure. So remember, we're not trying to cure symptoms. We're trying to help heal our body so they can be in ultimate health. And that part of that is finding what the root of the problem is. Now, in the case of cholesterol, it's also good to understand the, that cholesterol is necessary to the body. So it's about balancing out your cholesterol and making the healthy changes because statins are one of those medications that in my personal opinion, again, this is my personal opinion, do your own research, is never necessary. I believe that making the proper changes to diet and just your health, lifestyle in general is what you can do to balance out your cholesterol levels and be healthy and not ever have to go on medications. Now, I can give a good example right here because this is one of those things that many years ago, Patrick's doctor, this was quite some time back, was trying to put him on medication for high cholesterol. He tested his blood one time, said, oh, your cholesterol is high, you need to take this prescription medication. And I said, I don't think so. We're gonna, let's do some research on our own and find out a better way to get around this. And so that's what we did. And he never went on the medication and every other blood test he's had since then never indicated high cholesterol levels. So there you go. Anyway, so let me start off by listing off some of the lifestyle changes. And by the way, I'll also be putting a list, a link to a written list in the description box that you can click on that. That way you can have it already in writing if you want to copy and paste. And then you can add to that any of your own findings and i do try to be good at going back and adding to those lists when i find out more information or more herbs or more foods that can help with that particular thing whatever it is some very obvious things right at the top is to quit smoking if you're a smoker this is going to help with many many health ailments and just not putting that stress on your body is going to be a good place to start. Either quit drinking or at least limit the amount of alcohol you're consuming. And then maintaining a healthy weight. Again, this is another one of those that applies to any health related issue. And what that healthy weight is to you is going to depend on your body shape, your height, and so on. You shouldn't be a set weight like everyone else or a set pants or dress size that's gonna be all tailored to you 
and your body makeup. Now let's talk about some things that you should be avoiding and cutting out from your diet altogether for certain, and that is any kind of trans fats. Now some of these medical places you go to, and please note that when I do the research into these, I'm looking at all different sites. I'm looking at scientific studies. I'm looking at medical sites. I'm, list I'm reading what doctors have to say, and I'm also going to the natural sites and comparing all the information I find. A lot of the more pharmaceutical based places are going to tell you to avoid fats in general including the healthy fats like olive oil coconut oil and so on and i strongly disagree with that we need healthy fats in our diets but trans fats all the ones that our parents i'm 55 years old so i was raised on some of these trans fats like crisco margarine and so on these are the worst things especially if you're trying to balance your cholesterol those are what you should be avoiding. Margarine is just bad news. Go with real butter. Or if you're a vegan, find non-dairy sources of fat that you can replace these things with. And, and coconut oil is really one of those at the top of the list because it has so many uses. And you can get a refined version of coconut oil that's refined in a more natural process that removes the coconut flavor and aroma that can make it better for use in certain things you're going to cook and bake or if you just don't like the coconut flavor at all in any of your food and olive oil avocado oil these are really great sources for healthy fats and of course avocados in general eat avocados they're great for you and if you're not a vegan eggs whole eggs yolk and white don't let them scare you away from having those good healthy yolks especially if they're from farm raised chickens that have been allowed to eat all the grubs that they're supposed to be eating and they have that nice rich dark yellow yolk that's going to be the ones that are full of the most nutrients that your body needs to help it stay balanced all the way around oh and any fat that is partially partially hydrogenated i always have a hard time saying that those should be avoided as well. So there's a lot of those vegetable oils you'll find on the shelf. They might look clear and look nice. No, avoid those. Even lard. If you buy lard in a bucket, some of that stuff, there's certain, if you're not getting a true lard <laughs> from a good source, what you're getting is a partially hydrogenated lard. At least some of it is. So it's not the healthiest choice. I have lard, a big bucket of it. I keep that for soap making. So for making soaps and stuff like that, or even candles, no big deal. But you should not be ingesting that stuff. Just look for a more natural source. And here's just a short list that you're gonna find of foods that commonly have these trans fats that you should be avoiding. Pretty much any prepackaged food of any kind, avoid all of those. You should be making this stuff from scratch. Even if you're looking at those healthy quote unquote choices in the frozen foods department, those are gonna have those trans fats in them. Any kind of pies, uh, non-dairy creamers, all those fancy flavored things, avoid those like the plague. Make your own flavored creamers. There's healthy ways to do it, both vegan and dairy ways that you can make a good healthy creamer, making your own flavored extract and adding it to whatever type of milk whether it be you're making a really rich nut milk of some kind and adding that flavored extract to it or you're getting a good whole organic cream and adding the flavor to that those are much better ways to go about having a creamer a flavored creamer in your coffee so let me talk a little bit before i go on to some herbs and foods and supplements that you can add and talk a little bit about cholesterol in itself. There was a time frame where all cholesterol is bad. We should avoid cholesterol like the plague. And that's why they, people started taking the yolks out of their eggs and just going with egg whites. Ugh, how boring and flavorless. And that didn't do anything to help people's health. <laughs> so then they're like, oh, well, there's actually two different types of cholesterol. You have your high density and your low density, and the high density is good for you while the low density is bad. Well, now there's truth in the fact that there's two different types of cholesterol, but one is not bad. <laughs> they both have their own purpose in the body, and so they're both necessary. But having a good balance of these two is important. So typically you're looking at a higher range of HDL cholesterol, that's the good cholesterol, and a lower range of the LDL cholesterol which is labeled falsely in my opinion bad cholesterol it's all about 
having that balance. So how can you bring about that balance? It's not by taking a pharmaceutical. It's about these things I've mentioned so far, you know, obviously proper diet, healthy weight, uh, cutting back on the drinking and the smoking and getting some good exercise and, and so on. But now let's talk about some other things that you can add to your diet through supplementation and more. So I'm going to start off with a list of herbs that is a good idea to make sure you get plenty of. I'm sure there's more that can be added to this, but uh, I'm just going to start with these. And obviously you've got to pick and choose what's going to work for you because not everybody can have these different things. And uh, that's why it's great to have a list. I don't just want to say everybody should start eating garlic if you're allergic to garlic or it just doesn't set right with your gut, whatever the case is, then it's good to have other options. So obviously garlic is one of those things. And when it comes to garlic, any, any form of the garlic, be it dried or cooked or raw, but it, as often as you can get raw garlic in your diet, it's gonna help with so many things. It's a great immune booster. It's great for balancing cholesterol. It's helpful for diabetics and many other health issues. And then there's astragalus. This is a root that I started adding to my cough, cold, and flu remedy, but it's also very great for helping to balance cholesterol hawthorn plantain seed so we've talked about plantain quite a bit but it's the psyllium in the plantain seed that's one of the things out there that's highest in the psyllium and that is really great for helping to balance cholesterol and i believe that was in my list for diabetics as well turmeric green tea coriander and well, it said apple cider vinegar or ACV, but that can also be your own homemade vinegar that does not have to be made out of apples. It could be PCV, pear cider vinegar, or it can just be fruit vinegar that you made out of fruit scraps. As long as it's a good, healthy thing that you use to make the vinegar, I believe that's just going to be just as good for you as running down the store and buying an apple cider vinegar. And you can make it out of your own fruit scraps, juice, whatever for free. I have lots of videos on making your own homemade vinegar. I'll link to my more recent one down below. And it's a super easy process. And when you start making your own vinegar, you realize there's many, many uses for vinegar other than just taking it as a supplement. Okay, now let's go on to some foods. So some good healthy fish, whether it be the healthy fatty fish is high in the omega-3s and omega-6, or even your less fatty fish is very good for helping to balance cholesterol red yeast rice now this was the first i've heard of this some of you may already be familiar with it and that in particular is supposed to be very good for balancing out your cholesterol level so you might want to look into that for yourself i don't know a whole lot about it but uh, just something to add to that list artichokes i personally love artichokes so the leaf in particular so if, if you're like me and occasionally we like to get an artichoke and steam it and then dip it in butter and then eat the soft part off the leaf that's going to be really good for you but i'm pretty sure the artichoke hearts are going to be just as healthy and they're just wonderful i personally love them in any kind of soluble fiber food so again just like with the diabetes barley is one of those that's at the top of the list for a grain for that fiber but also any of your legumes your beans your your split peas your lentils rye is another one apples berries carrots broccoli these are all just some of the things that are good in those healthy soluble fibers that are going to be good for helping to keep the body flushed out of the excess cholesterol some other things would be the indian gooseberry alfalfa so those of you who like alfalfa sprouts there you go i love alfalfa sprouts but uh I just, I haven't had them in a long time, but I used to love them on sandwich, especially during that period of time where I was a vegetarian back in my 20s. One of my favorite sandwiches had, was cream cheese and alfalfa sprouts and, and avocado. Oh my goodness, that was a really good sandwich. And that was my, obviously when I was vegetarian, not during the time when I was a vegan in my 40s. And some other things, so this is one of the things we did for Patrick is I started making hummus for him on a regular basis. So I actually have a hummus recipe out there. I'll go ahead and link to down below. I keep forgetting it's out there, but um, it's just the one I came up with. The great thing about making your own hummus is you can add whatever herbs and spices you want to get the flavor you want from your hummus. And so he really liked that. And that was something I would even send with 
him to work and his lunches and maybe some carrot sticks or whatever that he can use to dip into the hummus. So really good option. Now, one of the other things that's often recommended that I did do with Patrick at the time was soy milk. But we've since gone back to dairy milk with no issues. So, and I personally, this is my own personal opinion, think that in most cases that soy should be avoided unless it's in a good fermented form. A little bit of soy is not going to hurt you, but a lot of soy, because soy is a natural estrogen mimicker, I, I think in general most people should be avoiding it. But that's, again, my personal opinion on soy. And by the way, soy milk you buy at the store, it actually tastes good. True soy milk does not taste good. I tried making it myself, it's horrible. It tastes like beans. <laughs> it's just yucky. So whatever it is they're doing to that soy milk that they're selling at the store, organic or not, they're doing something to it to take out that, strip out that bean flavor and adding other stuff in to give it a nice flavor so it's suitable. And that always has me suspicious. If a soy milk tastes good, there's probably something wrong with it. But you can make your own nut milks. I have all kinds of videos of making your own nuts and seed milks for those of you who are vegan or are trying to avoid dairy for whatever reason. There's, you can make your own really great tasting non-dairy milks from coconut, almonds, uh, even whatever blends, like one of my favorites is a blend of pecans and cashews, walnuts, whatever it is you wanna make your nut milk out of. It's super easy. And by the way, I'll just link to the playlist, the dairy-free playlist I have, where I not only talk about ways to make different milks, but how to also make dairy-free puddings and sauces, you know, like a fettuccine sauce and so on. And then of course your healthy nuts. I was talking about the nut milk, so don't forget all those healthy nuts. It's another healthy fat source. And another one I thought was interesting that was on the list of foods was okra. So a lot of you people from the South that really like okra, I actually like okra, I just don't eat it that much, but I prefer it breaded and fried with a little some seasoning. I think that's pretty darn good. So that you can, you cook it up really fast before it starts to turn to slime. Now some supplements you consider you can consider adding, especially if you're one who doesn't like seafood, then consider getting a good quality fish oil that you can add to your diet. That can be very healthy. And by the way, that's very good for dogs too. I, I'm assuming cats, but it's really good for dogs as well. And they love it. It's good for their coats. It's just, especially if they have any kind of skin allergy, it's really great to get that fish oil into your dog's diet. Now, niacin is one of those that's often prescribed even sometimes, and it is good. It's a B vitamins, B3. But you have to be careful with niacin, just like a lot, there's certain vitamins you have to be very careful not to get too much of. So sometimes people start taking these high quantities of a B3 without taking it in a full complex form. And then they, you know, they'll get the flushed face and it can cause some other health issues. So if that's happening, you're getting too much niacin. So consider if you're going to supplement with Bs, go for the whole B complex or at least look for foods that are high in niacin instead of supplementing with niacin alone. And again, as I'm always saying, when you're looking at supplements, avoid tablets like the plague. Always look at going for a high quality capsule form of that supplement. I only take capsules, I never take tablets, or I even make my own capsules. So if we go back to our list here where we're talking about the turmeric or even the psyllium, maybe you're growing the plantain and you're collecting those seeds and you're powdering them up, you can always encapsulate those. But you could also cook with the seeds or add them to breads. Those are some other ways that you can get more of that into your diet too. And then coenzyme Q10. This is another one that's strongly recommended if you're trying to balance out your cholesterol levels. And that's it for my list there. If by, by the time this video publishes and I get that list out there, the written list, hopefully I might have had some more that I can add in there. And if people would like to chime in down below with some other ideas for herbs and supplements and foods that you know are really helpful at balancing out cholesterol, then go ahead and put those in comments down below and I'll try to make sure I get into that list and edit it and add those things into the list so that when people go open up that list, they can have as much information in there as possible. And don't forget to check out my playlist I'll be linking to in the description box down below to my natural remedies list 
So it has, and I, I'm always adding to it, and I have several more I'm going to keep doing because I get people coming in and asking me questions all the time. What would you recommend for this or that? That spurs me into doing some research and studies and, again, comparing, cross-comparing different places, whether it be from Harvard Medical or wherever, and compiling the information together based on the best information I can find from all these places. Oh, and don't forget to read the comments down below as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.